Hi everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at proving some proofs using the eight rules of inference that we've learned so far. Before we get started, I just want to talk about some changes that I'm going to be doing uh, from now on. Um, the practice exercises that we do in, in these videos, I haven't been including them in uh, the exercises, but I'm going to start now uh, for a few reasons. One is that um, if you want to practice them beforehand after you get the introductory videos, the, the videos which introduce you to the rules, then you could do that and give it a shot and see if you could solve it by yourself. Um, if you uh, Also, if you want to review it after we're done with these videos, if you just want to review it later, uh, that's fine with me too. So I'm officially going to start including them in the exercise files. So now that we got that out of the way, uh, let's get started on this problem. So the first thing I want to do is I just want to examine the problem and uh, I want to I want to see uh, if we can figure anything out just by looking at it. So I see that I have a P and I see that I have a Q here p by itself and a q by itself so see that I have a conjunction right here so that gives me an idea that I'm going to need to start with a conjunction so I'm going to go with that so I'm going to get p and q and I'm going to get that through 1 3 conjunction now that I have this conjunction I see right here that I can do a modus ponens so I'm going to get h or j through uh, 2 uh, 5 modus ponens now that I have this modus ponens right here I see that I have these two conditionals joined by uh, a conjunction operator so that gives me an idea for a constructive dilemma now if I had the form for a constructive dilemma um, I would get H or J and another thing I see is looking at the conclusion the conclusion gives me the idea that I'm gonna have a constructive dilemma because I see that it's K or I which I'd get if I have H or J and you look down here at my premise 6 and I see that I do have H or J so it means that the, I'm gonna be able to get the conclusion K or I and I'm going to get that through 4, uh, 6, constructive dilemma. And so uh, just a quick recap. So I first started by doing a conjunction, 1, 3, conjunction. And then with that conjunction, I was able to get this modus ponens to get H or J. Now that I have H or J, I can use it to get the constructive dilemma set up. If you have H, then K. And if you have J, then I. H or J. H or J. And you get K or I. K or I. Um, so, uh, like in these videos, I, I try to do an easier problem and a harder problem, just so if I give you a harder problem, you're not completely left in the dark. Um, so this problem that we're going to be doing is a little bit harder, um, but um, it should be completely doable. So let's get started. Like uh, the other problem, um, let's try by examining the, the problem first to see if we can get an idea of how to get started. So I see that I have my P here, um, and I see in the second premise I have P or J. So that gives me the idea that I'm going to start with addition. Now that I have some idea on how to start it, I'm going to get started. Um, so I'm going to get P or J through 1 addition. And after I have that, I'm going to get R and Q through 2, 6 modus ponens. Now that I have R and Q, let's see if there's anything I can do with R and Q. I don't see anything here that I can do with R and Q. Um, I do see that... Um, let's see, I see that I have P and R right here, so if I simplify R and I get P and R, I can get, uh, I can get U or O. Um, another thing I see is I have 